see so many people. It's exciting to be here. There, hi. <laughs> It's the Robinsons. Hey, hi, Randy. Randy. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. Welcome, come coming back here. I like it. I like it's having you having. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so thankful. It'll be strange not to see you both next Wednesday night, <laughs> unless yeah. we're invited. <laughs> <laughs> we have nowhere else to be. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't these lovely meetings though? Oh, they're great yes. meetings. Enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. This is, of course, all Laura's idea. You can imagine. She's we, good. We were she just on a good. Zoom with some friends from New Hampshire and Colorado, mm -hmm. and it is 39 degrees mm -hmm. there with snow. And and snow. I play golf today in my shorts, and it's 70. So we're very lucky <laughs> here. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Adam and Shume are in Boston, and it's freezing. Yep. Yes. That's quite a picture of your left hand shoulder there, Laura. Yeah, the kids. Yay. Yeah. I have to put my glasses. Oh, cute. Wedding. Adam and Shumay's wedding. Yeah. Hey, Laura, thank you for sending me that article that your son wrote. That was cool. I'll have to send it over to you guys too, Robinsons and Adam. Adam is uh, a, a, contrib a contributing writer on to um, another COVID article. Yes, please do. Yeah. We are very blessed, the two of us have already mm -hmm. had our second shot. So we are allegedly 95% immune right now. Yay. So that, that's an awfully good feeling. So now you know we're old. <laughs> we found out today that our teacher candidates can probably get their sh their vaccines. So yeah. we're in the process of figuring out how to let everybody know. Yeah. Good. I miss seeing the fountain at night. Yeah, it's beautiful. All you students, do you miss that too? I was just about to say the same thing. I remember when I would walk on campus, when I had like a link class and just seeing it change colors. Yeah. It's so pretty and I haven't seen it in over a year. It's so sad. Exactly. Um, what was your favorite color? Oh, when they went from like this like red color, it just looks so nice. And I thought yeah. that, I think that was my favorite. What about you? <laughs> I, I think I would have to say red as well. Yeah. We have no bias towards Fresno State colors. It was just red. <laughs> I was just going to say that it has to be. Red. <laughs> we have no choice. You know what? Someone told me when I got here, you're going to get tired of the color red. <laughs> I haven't yet. Me, I started liking it more. Red and blue suddenly became my favorite colors. I swear to you, I do not know why. <laughs> <laughs> One of our previous provosts used to wear red to every event. So she had just a huge wardrobe of red clothing. And then she became president at Bakersfield and their colors are blue and something. So every picture I see of her now, she's wearing blue. Blue. <laughs> She's loyal. Yeah. Be true to and, your school. And ready for 4th of July. <laughs> 18. Dean Yerrick, are you ready? I'm so ready. Are you ready? All right. Well, welcome, everybody. This is our fifth and our final uh, award ceremony tonight for uh, recognizing those who have received scholarships from Kremen. We are so blessed tonight to have donors with us, recipients with us, and even faculty with us this evening to support our students. That's just awesome. I wanna first recognize uh, Dr. Fry Bolin, Dr. Walleitner. Uh, let's see who else do I have? Dr. Lee, Dr. Zhang. Thank you all for coming. I hope I didn't miss any of my own faculty here. 
um, looking just to make sure. Thank you all faculty for coming. Um, this is our fifth and final tonight. You'll meet scholarship recipients from their, some of their faculty members, the donors who make it possible, the staff and the faculty. And I just wanna make sure that you all know that this has been probably one of the highlights of this whole semester for me so far. I'm sure graduation and commencement will be another highlight, but just being able to hear from uh, donors and why they decided to support our students and students who are telling their stories about what a huge impact the donors have uh, made on their lives and on their trajectories. We get to meet some of their families. We get to meet their children. It's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. So thank you all for coming. I'm sorry, this is our last one, uh, but I'm gonna turn this over to our development director whose idea this was. She and Kathy Godfrey, as well as uh, Heather McDowell have been so instrumental in making all this happen. I just wanna thank them and Laura, take it away. Thank you, Dean Yurick. Well, I would like to welcome our donors tonight, Mike and Sally Robinson. Uh, you'll hear from them a little later in the program. Um, so here are the rules for tonight. Uh, just remain on mute during the presentation and use the chat feature if you wanna express congratulations or um, say hello. Um, you also might want to set your screen to speaker view so you can have the best experience and you can uh, see firsthand what's going on. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our Interim Associate Dean, Dr. Kathy Godfrey. Good evening, everyone. I wanna see your faces before I switch over to the, to the script. So just really nice to have you all here tonight. Welcome to all the scholarship recipients and their families. Tonight, we have a very special presentation of the scholarship students of the Kremen School. We also have faculty here who are supporting the students receiving the scholarships and to join them in this celebration. The first scholarship tonight is the Frank Easterly Scholarship. This scholarship is for a Kremen junior or senior with a 3.0 GPA. We have five scholarship recipients. The first is Myra Becerra. Myra is a liberal arts major and her hometown is Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe. Welcome, Myra. Your professor, Dr. Van Horn, wanted to join us this evening to support you, but she had to teach. Instead, she sent this message for you. Congratulations to Myra Becerra. Myra is a student in the South Valley Integrated Teacher Education Program. She obtained her associate degree of transfer and was accepted into the rigorous ITEP program, where she will complete her Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies and her multiple subject teaching credential a year and a half early. She has spent years working in schools, valuing children and their amazing talents. Myra is a critically minded educator who advocates for equity and social justice. I am proud to celebrate such an amazing future teacher and leader in our community. That's just such a lovely tribute to you, Myra. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what the scholarship means to you? Yes, um, sorry, you're navigating Zoom. I, I know it already, but um, so I'm a single mom of four kiddos, and I'm so thankful for every like donor, every penny that they put towards us because every time someone does, it makes it like, um, it makes us realize it's not just us. Like, I'm pushing for my kids but there's people outside of my own home, outside of my direct family that are pushing for us to succeed. It hasn't been easy. And I can honestly say when I first got it, I was like, oh my God, it's so exciting because it gives you just a little bit of hope because school's hard. Um, having like a financial burden on top of school makes it even that much harder. But I am so thankful it's helped me pay bills. And like, I know someone asked me like, oh, can you use it for that? I'm like, if I can't pay my house, I don't have nowhere to live. I can't study. If I can't put gas in my car, I can't go to school. It's all one big cycle. And I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for the scholarship because it's, I'm God willing, everything keeps going while I'm putting in my own work, but I graduate May 14th. Um, that's with my BA and it's a, it's a blended program. So credential, we apply for it at the end. And, um, 
God willing, it keeps going, you know, good because I'm putting in the work for it. But thank you so much. Um, this scholarship has been, you know, another thing to add to say, like, thank you. I'm like so thankful to everyone that makes it happen from the people reading all her scholarship applications to you guys hosting this event and like reminding us like you worked for it and here it is. So thank you so much. I realized I muted myself. Thank you so much. That uh, was really moving. And I love that idea of you feeling like you're being supported by a community instead of being on your own. So I hope that all of you scholarship recipients feel that way. Thank you. The next recipient is Fatima Gomez Fuentes. Fatima is a liberal arts major with a minor in Spanish. Her home city is Fresno. Fatima, would you like to say a few words about what this scholarship means to you? Yeah, thank you. So I wanted to say um, that I'm very thankful for the donors giving me a dreamer and my dreams a chance at being continued and having more opportunities in the education field. One day I wish to show students that with effort and perseverance, anything is possible, no matter where you come from, and more so with the help of very kind hearts like those that donate for us. Um, in these hard times, it's a little bit, um, it can become a little bit difficult to realize where we stand and how to continue on with our education. But being a scholarship recipient, it really helped me find hope. And I believe that it will really give me a chance to slowly accommodate into our virtual learning. So I am beyond honored and very grateful for the opportunity. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Fatima. Man, we're really proud of you. Our next recipient is Amanda Molina. Amanda is a senior majoring in liberal studies to become an elementary school teacher, and she's from Porterville. Amanda, would you like to speak for a few minutes? Yeah, so I'm Amanda, and I just wanted to say thank you for this scholarship because it has helped me a lot, especially because due to COVID, um, I had an apartment in Clovis and I wasn't living there anymore because I didn't have to be on campus. So I was just here in Porterville and I would still have to pay rent month after month after month because nobody wanted to take over a lease. And, um, and I wasn't working because um, my job was for the Jumpstart program that Fresno State offers. And so it's working at preschools and all the preschools are closed. So I didn't have a job and I still had to pay all of my bills. So this scholarship really helped me um, not have to worry about like having to find a job, having to put my life on the line and working in public in the middle of a pandemic. I didn't have to worry about uh, my health or my being and then coming home to my parents who are in their fifties. So it really helped me not have to worry about that and I, I'm just extremely grateful for that. And me, myself and my family would really like to thank the donors. Thank you so much, Amanda. What a challenging year this has been. <laughs> Our final two recipients for this scholarship were not able to join us this evening, but they are Guadalupe Hernandez Lopez and Estefania Palomares. So we would like to con congratulate them as well. Before we go on, we'd like to introduce a couple who are committed donors to the Kremen School of Education. Mike and Sally Robinson, welcome to our reception tonight. Could you please tell us a little bit about why you both set up your scholarship and what it means to meet the students who benefit from your generosity? Thanks, Kathleen and Randy. Thank you, Laura also, and Heather also. Thank you very much for hosting this event. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, when Sally and I thought about whether we wanted to donate, lots of things went into it. And first and foremost, and we've said there's a lot of people, I think it's both in both of our DNAs to want to give back to the community in some way, whether it's volunteering or monetarily. But most importantly, education is huge in our lives, um, particularly Kremen School. We're both retired educators. We're both alumni of Fresno State, Bulldog born, Bulldog bred. And we both have our master's degree in counseling. So we wanted to give money towards somebody pursuing 
a graduate degree in counseling, that's really, really important to us. So those are some of the major reasons why we decided to donate. And I know there's others who donate have great reasons also. So we're very excited about it. Sally, do you yeah. want to it, For us, this was a great event because on the last one, we were actually able to meet what our recipient. And to hear her <clears throat> tell the story that she lost her job during COVID, financially she was hurting and and just to, and to hear her talk about her education and what it meant that meant a lot to us mm -hmm. so we thank you for doing this and to each and every one of you just fulfill your passion fulfill your dreams and we're proud of each one of you we wish we could see you in person and someday maybe we'll be able to congratulate <clears throat> you in person thank you Thank you so much for sharing those stories, uh, Mike and Sally. We know that, that that idea of giving back is something that is really beneficial to the community. Um, and we also know that our students are giving back through their work as teachers and counselors. And so it's kind of this really beautiful cycle of, of all of us supporting each other and are making our community better. So we really appreciate the model that you've set. Um, in doing that. The next scholarship is the Jerry Schupin Scholarship. This scholarship supports undergraduate students in the Crumman School pursuing a teaching credential who remain in good academic standing with at least a 3.0 GPA. Our first recipient is Lisbeth Cortez Vea. Uh, Lisbeth is a liberal studies major who is from Dos Palos. Before we hear from Lisbeth, we have her professor here, Dr. Juliet Walleitner. Dr. Walleitner, would you like to speak for a few minutes? Yes, please, thank you. So it is such an honor to be here this evening uh, to speak about Lisbeth. Um, Lisbeth was a student in my liberal studies 110W course in fall 2019. Back in that other time where we actually got to meet one another face to face. Um, and in that course, which I think, believe was her first with the cohort, um, she was always active and engaged. Um, and I just, I really enjoyed having her in class. Um, and so this was a writing course. So I get to learn lots about my students from their writing. And so from, uh, or through some of the writing that Lizbeth did for the class, I learned about her history as a student. Um, and as a child, she navigated moving back and forth between two cultures physically in that she moved with her family back and forth between the United States and Mexico um, and experienced school in both places and trying to manage that. Um, but then she was also navigating the different linguistic cultures of Spanish and English. Um, at first, uh, she shared that she struggled with English, but then as she became more proficient, she became a language broker for her siblings, for her parents, parents and even other classmates. Um, and she commented that it wasn't always easy, but she wanted to make her family proud because she knew of the sacrifices that they made for her. Uh, and she wrote, and Lizbeth, I hope it's okay that I'm sharing some of this. Uh, you might not even remember that you wrote this, but um, it was really moving to me and I think others will find it moving as well. Uh, she said, I hope that now I am making not only my parents proud, but my siblings as well. I once thought that I would never make it this far and I would end up failing all those who believed in me. Being the first in my family to attend college was incredibly nerve wracking, but I can now say with certainty that I could not be any happier. I am truly learning so much and I could not be any more excited to graduate and inspire the next migrant generation. So I'm just so excited to have Lizbeth be receiving this scholarship um, and to be welcoming her into the teaching profession. She's so deserving and I know she will go on to motivate and inspire her future students to do great things. So congratulations, Lizbeth. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dr. Walleitner. That was really moving. Uh, Lizbeth, would you like to chime in? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor Waltleitner. You got me a little tear-eyed, so my voice is going to get shaky now. Um, but I would just like to thank you guys so much for the support you have given me. Um, I am the oldest of my siblings. I'm the first to go to college. I'm the first to do everything, and I've done it on my own, obviously with the support of my community and my family. 
And because I've had such a great support system, this scholarship has helped me so much. I love volunteering. And because of the scholarship, I have been able to keep volunteering with the nonprofits that I work with. A lot of them do food banks. And especially right now with COVID, I've been, I lost my job, but thankfully with the scholarships that I received, I've still been able to volunteer as much as I am that I have in the past. And just seeing all these families that are also struggling because of the pandemic and being able to work with these food banks and put food on their table has been such a rewarding experience. And it has shown me that even through tough times together, we can succeed. And that's what I would like to say. Thank you for sticking with me and with my education. Wow, you're an inspiration, Lizbeth. Thank you so much for sharing that. The next recipient was not able to join us tonight, but we would like to congratulate Emily Courier. Our next scholarship is the William Glenn Miller Memorial and Linda Carroll Miller Memorial Scholarships. These scholarships are for students majoring in education. The first recipient could not join us this evening, but sent us an email with his regards. David Alvarez Jr. apologizes that he cannot attend as he has a commitment with his children during this time. He sends his gratitude to the donors and his professors and appreciates their commitment to education. On that note, we have a special guest who would like to offer congratulations to David. Dr. Earl Aguilera is David's project advisor. Dr. Aguilera, this is being recorded, so we will get your congratulations over to David. Please share with us. Dr. Aguilera, are you muted? Okay, good. That's actually kind of good because I'm like shouting over here. There's things happening in the apartment, so I'm glad. I'm glad the accidental extra mute control was on. Um, hi, everybody, uh, and thank you again for allowing me to speak. Um, and share some of David's um, thoughts. Um, I hope everybody here is doing well. I'm joining you from the occupied territory on which our university has been built, uh, the land that the Yokut and the Mono peoples have stewarded for centuries, um, and the land on which their diverse tribal communities continue to live, work, and advocate for social and environmental justice. Uh, I've spoken to David uh, to prepare these remarks and ensure that his intentions, gratitude, and vision are shared with you all. Um, I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to have been assigned as David's project advisor, though I can assure you that uh, our relationship has been much more of a, a mutual mentorship than anything else. Together with Dr. Lise Lee Oliver from the Department of Women's Studies and the American Indian Studies Program, uh, it's been my honor to watch David grow as a scholar, uh, as an advocate for the indigenous student experience, uh, and as a trusted colleague. David's master's project, uh, which is entitled American Indian Students' Sense of Belonging in Higher Education, is framed through the lens of tribal critical race theory, which recognizes both the realities of colonialism uh, and the value of the lived experiences of indigenous peoples. For his project, uh, David reached out to survey um, Native American identifying students across California's public higher education system to ask about their on and off campus experiences. He also convened focus groups uh, to discuss with current students their experiences of daily life in higher education. While overall, um, David's findings suggested that participants did feel a sense of belonging to their respective campuses, uh, they did not always feel their campus celebrated Native American students and their culture respectfully. Uh, and so amidst ongoing struggles for racial justice, indigenous sovereignty, and environmental sustainability, um, I really believe that, that David's findings provide further evidence that can help inform policymaking, education, uh, as well as direct organized action. Uh, David would like to share that his work is a dedication to the past, present, and future of this community. He hopes to help Native people be visible in higher education and calls on institutions to humanize their existence. Uh, though David trusted me enough to say the right things, I highly encourage anybody who's interested um, to learn more about his work, as well as the broader field um, of Indigenous studies in education in which his 
project uh, is situated. And one other thing that David would like to share uh, that I just got uh, via text message is that he just received his acceptance letter from UC Davis PhD program in Native American studies. Uh, so really uh, overwhelmingly excited to hear about him taking the next step of his journey. Um, in the acknowledgments of his manuscript, uh, David recognizes his ancestors, his parents, his community, his wife, his sons, and all his relations. To his family in particular, he writes, continue to stay strong and use my path as a guide to your dreams and never forget where you come from. May we all heed his words uh, and continue to work toward a vision of educational, cultural, and environmental justice for all. Thank you. That is wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Aguilera. I want to also read Carol Fry Boland, who is double booked tonight and can't speak on David's behalf, but wanted to say that David is a very special student who has taught the faculty and fellow students so much in the MA program in curriculum and instruction. She says it's been an honor serving as his advisor. He's conducting research on American Indian students' sense of belonging in higher education, a very important topic. We're eager to learn from his findings and to make the university a more welcoming and empowering place for Native students. Congratulations, David, and all of our wonders, wonderful scholarship recipients. Dr. Aguilera, if you don't mind, would you send both the donors and me, uh, probably Kathy as well, a copy of his master's project? I would love to read it. Thank you, Dr. Aguilera, and thank you, Dr. Fry Boland, for sharing those um, sentiments about David. And I echo uh, Randy's desire to read the dissertation. Um, or sorry, the thesis, I, I'm really excited. Obviously, I'm really excited that David's going on to a PhD program as well. For sure. Our next recipient is Oneida Escobar. Oneida is working on her MS in counseling, student affairs and college counseling. Her hometown is Porterville. On a personal note, I'm grateful to Oneida for her fine work as an intern in our advising center. She has played such an important role in supporting students over the last two years. Thank you so much, Oneida. We have Dr. Sua Shang here tonight to speak on behalf of Oneida. Welcome, Dr. Shang. Thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you for allowing me to be here today and speak a little bit about Oneida. Um, but speaking of the Kremlin Advising Center, I have a little quick story before I jump into what I prepared, but it was actually about almost two years ago. I don't know if she remembers, but it was actually one of our first interactions. She had just been accepted. We had our new student orientation on a Friday. We had gone over kind of like the advising course sequencing, letting students know about don't wait till your second year field placement to get experience and that they should be seeking out opportunities their first semester, first year. Guess who I got an email from the very next day <laughs> on a Saturday. And so um, she was the first student to contact me saying, this is what you shared. I want to know about my different opportunities. We talked about different offices, departments on campus, and she ultimately decided the Kremlin Advising Center was where she wanted to start off at. We did the email introduction to Jessica, Ivy, Anna, and well, you know, the rest is history. And so she's been there two years. She's also added on her um, internship sites at, at Fresno City College. And so what I prepared there as it relates to that is that I just said that speaks highly to not only the type of person that she is, but also the professional that she was coming into the program, who was always so proactive in seeking out different opportunities and experiences so that she can effectively serve students. And so um, what I shared is that I've seen her grow and develop over the last couple of years. And then especially this year as her um, instructor for field placement. So I've had her last semester, this semester. Um, and so everybody that I've talked to, everybody that has worked with or have come in contact with Oneida has had nothing but positive things about her in terms of whether it was her site supervisors at Kremen or at Fresno City or her peers in the program. And so with that, I would just say, 
I know that you're going to become a, an amazing student affairs professional who's going to continue to support students to not only uh, to thrive and succeed uh, during their college years. And so I just want to say keep up the great work and congratulations on receiving this scholarship. Thank you so much for honoring Oneida tonight, Dr. Sean. Oneida, would you like to say a few words? Yes, hello everyone, and thank you for the kind words to, to uh, Dr. Godfrey and Dr. Zhang. It's very much appreciated. Um, so firstly, I would like to thank the donors of the Linda Carroll Miller Scholarship. You know, as a master's uh, student in counseling, um, focusing on student affairs and college counseling, the need for individuals to support college students through these trying times of the course of this past year has been needed more than ever. So college, as we all know, the students are tackling um, this never before fully online experience. And there has been a lack of social interactions. So this scholarship has allowed me the opportunity to dedicate time to being able to virtually support students through mentorship. So um, I have worked very closely with the Fresno State Liberal Studies students, credential candidates, Fresno State athletes, and our Fresno City College students. Um, having the opportunity to lend an ear, empathize with the unique challenges that they're facing, whether it's through mental health or through academics. So it's been an absolute honor to serve these students and share this experience with them as well. So this would not have been possible without the financial contributions of donors such as yourself to make these opportunities happen for me to be able to give back to others as well. Um, so thank you very much and thank you to Dr. Yurik and uh, Dr. Godfrey for your leadership and inclusion in supporting me uh, through the Center for Advising Student Services. And I just wanted to leave off with um, a quote that I really found inspirational from Lance Armstrong that knowledge is power, community is strength, and positive attitude is everything. Um, so thank you everyone for, for being that community. Oh, I love that quote. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Oneida. And I have to say that our students have really benefited from the work that you've done. So many, many thanks on their behalf as well. Our final scholarship recipient is Berenice Tapia. Berenice is from Porterville and she is pursuing an MS in, counsel in counseling. Dr. Shang is also here to speak on behalf of Berenice. So thank you for another opportunity to share a little bit about uh, Berenice. And so I wrote here, I was like, what, what can I say about Berenice? And so um, I've had the honor and privilege not only to be her instructor, but also her supervisor during her counseling practicum, um, as well as field placement. So I've seen her grow and develop as a counselor and student affairs educator over the years. So I've, I've known her since her first year at her classes over and then I've also seen her grow and develop as a researcher and scholar, presenting her research along with her colleagues, her classmates at a statewide conference in Oakland, uh, seeing them meet the, at the time the, the president of ACPA, then also them putting together or completing an exemplar master's project on the experiences of Latinas and graduate uh, in, well, in higher education, but spe specifically highlighting their undergrad and graduate experiences. And so, well, last part I'll say is that I couldn't be more proud of Benice and some of the things that she's been able to accomplish during her time in the program, given some of the personal and professional challenges that she's had to overcome. And so congratulations on receiving this scholarship. Thank you so much for sharing those words. Clearly you're a good mentor, Dr. Sean. <laughs> Berenice, would you like to say a few words? Yes, first and foremost, I would just like to thank Dr. Zhang for his mentorship, for his guidance throughout the past three years. Um, but I would also like to thank um, the donors of the scholarship because it has meant so much to me. Um, just being able to breathe and be fully present with my students when I'm counseling them has been so rewarding. Um, in the past, it's always been, but how am I going to make ends meet? And that's always in the back of my mind. So you know, it's the first year in seven years that I didn't have to take out a loan. And so that is incredible in itself. So thank you. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
these scholarship donors are just um, so generous and kind. And, and I know that they do it because they believe in our students. So Ber Berenice, that's also a tribute to you that you were selected to receive this scholarship. Tribute to all of our scholarship recipients. I'd like to turn the, to the mic back over to Laura Clark now. Thank you, Dr. Godfrey. Dr. Lee, um, did I um, miss having you speak about a student, I hope? Okay, good. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Anyway, this was our, our fifth and final scholarship reception. And we are so excited that you all were able to join us tonight. Um, I want to tell you uh, a little bit about something you might be interested in. Um, we, tonight, we've had the opportunity to meet some outstanding and promising students, but they would not have been here without the guidance and support of, like you see, some amazing teachers and professors. Here at the Kremen School, we have what's called a teacher honor well right outside the building, the regular building, not the virtual building, where a volunteer committee has worked for over 20 years to honor these heroes. If you would like to create a brick in honor of your teacher, student, or other educator, please go to the Kremen homepage on the Fresno State website for more information. Um, I would also like to extend a sincere thank you to our donors tonight, Mike and Sally Robinson. Thank you so much for helping us out, um, as well as our other special guests this evening, the faculty. Um, thank you for joining us. Final, finally, as we conclude our last reception for this um, school year, I would like to thank our development coordinator, Heather McDowell. I wouldn't have been able to do this without her. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you and turn it back over to Dean Yerrick. Well, I'm sorry this has to come to an end. I truly am, but I wanna thank all the faculty who showed up. I wanna thank the students for, um, coming and meeting their donors. I wanna thank the donors for being so generous in their, in their giving and being so authentic and gracious uh, to want to meet and to embrace the, the students that they're supporting. It's just, it just reminds me that Kremen is a family. I've, I've been invited to be a part of a wonderful family. And uh, in the last six months, it just keeps getting better. So it's a treat for us tonight to honor these amazing students, to give thanks to their support systems and express our appreciation to our generous donors. In Kremen, we talk about the Kremen community. I really kind of talk about it as a family, but it's because we rely on each other and we work together for our student success. This event reminds me that it's not just those who work for us or to study at Fresno State, but the families and friends and community members that all wrap around our students. So thanks for celebrating these students with us tonight and for being a part of the Kremen family and stay tuned for some graduation news coming soon. So we're at an end, but if anyone would like to say anything before we all log off, feel free to step up to the mic mm. uh, and otherwise have a good evening. <laughs> Thank night. you everyone. Good night everybody. This was great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a wonderful event. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, Elizabeth. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Dr. Wellheimer. So, Laura and Heather, good work. Thank you. Yeah. Number five. <laughs> Number five. Yep. Awesome. Every one of them. Every one of them is awesome. I just am so grateful to be able to connect with these students and be able to hear what they're not just going through, but hear how they're overcoming and hear how they connect with people. And, you know, it, it, it just reminds us, it just reminds us that, that we all need each other all the time. Absolutely. And we need Laura and Heather. <laughs> Thank you guys too. Thank you so much. See, Heather's not going to know what to do. We don't have our Tuesday I'll cram the some uh, scholarship duties. 
<laughs> from Dr. Godfrey probably will fill my, yeah. my time. <laughs> It's time for the next round almost, right? Yeah, it is. I had to look at my calendar to try to figure out when it was, and I think it was the end of March. So it's come well, up. Yeah. What's so it's exciting so is that all of these are recorded. So we will be able to send this uh, to the 